Well, tonight, CM Punk was dropping some facts tonight. Well, I got my own fact to drop on ya. Tonight's 20th anniversary of War sucked. Fucking sucked. Disappointing. You can tell me you can have the 20th anniversary of War, you can have Rock there and Flair out of his mind, but no Austin, no Tucker, no Shawn Michaels. Bullshit. Very angry Zach Attack here with my 20th anniversary of War review for tonight. January the 14th, 2013. This is how you celebrate War. Well, I know, let me say this. WWE, I know they did a whole star studded thing on War 1000, which is fine. And I know they're trying to focus on the stars, the current stars, which was mentioned throughout the evening. Like, they, like Cena saying, forget about past history, War about the future. That's what it was about tonight, current and future. But at least they should have had some people from the past that are having fucking flashbacks tonight. The Cena Ziggler match is probably the only highlight of the night. Wildcats was kind of disappointed, though. WWE could have done a lot tonight. They could have built the Wumble a lot more. And they could have honored Wall a lot more than they fucking did tonight. Hell, even the 15th anniversary of Wall was better than this shit. And this is as bad as episode 900. I know 1000 was a big thing, but episode 900 wall was a useless wall, like this wall was tonight. You know, they should have done a lot more, and tonight was just disappointing. They didn't have as much legend appearances as they did. They should have, in my mind. Like I said, I know they did the whole big legends thing during wall 1000, but come on. They should have done something better than just air flashbacks of legends. Should hire the real things. Now, we did have flashbacks throughout the evening, including, of course, we began Wall with a highlight of the Wall themes throughout the years, highlight of Wall intros throughout the years, ending with, of course, the last theme, Nickelback's, put it to the ground. We began Wall after that with Vince in the ring, talking about 20th anniversary of Wall, blah, 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 blah you know. Four billion people talking about the accomplishments of Wall, about him being a genius of creating Wall, blah 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 blah. And as Vince was going on and on about the, the accomplishments, the achievements Wall's done in the last 20 years, I'll give him credit for that, but it deserved a better 20th anniversary celebration than this shit they did tonight. Um, Vince was interrupted by the big show, of course, steaming mad at losing the war title this past Friday on SmackDown to a brother the Rio. During the last man standing match, which was impromptu. Um, as Big Show was ranting on and on, Vince made fun of him big time. And made fun of him more was Alberto Del Rio. Who, of course, wanted to give the Big Show a rematch tonight. But Big Show was like, no, San Antonio's not a good That's San Antonio, but Houston's not a good place. Thank God it wasn't Corpus Christi. Anyway, um... If this wall was at Corpus Christi, it would be twice as bad as it was tonight. Anyway, of course, Big Show did click here. He does have a rematch clause. It will be at the Royal Rumble. Kind of kind of thought that. So, so Bruno Del, Del Rio, Big Show, official for uh, Royal Rumble. Another match official for SummerSlam. I mean, not SummerSlam. Why right, saying SummerSlam? Royal Rumble. Um, Wall losing their minds tonight. We all wish it was a different month. Because Wall sucking right now. <laughs> anyway. It's supposed to be the Water Warrior Rumble, damn. What? Yeah, what? Anyway. Um, so, a bird that we owe had a trash can given to Ricardo. Thinking it was water, but it was confetti. Spraying it up a big show, and Alberto had a beat down on big show. Taking him out of the ring after Insiguri kicking the corner. Of course, Alberto sending a big message to big show. Pun the pun. As of course, now it's official, Alberto will defend the title in a rematch. Against the big show while saying it's in Spanish. See, of course, this is a Spanish, a Latino dominated area in uh, Texas. He would big show's cojones to be grown, and of course, the fat jackass would bring it on to Alberto Del Rio in the match at the Royal Rumble for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now, besides the World Heavyweight Championship match being declared, we had another match added, which I'll get to in a moment. First, on to our first match of Warm. Which was Wade Barrett, the Intercontinental Champion, taking on Randy Orton. These two had a feud a couple of years ago, and kind of we got reignited. 
This match to begin Raw 20 tonight was okay starting. Probably one of the only really good matches of Raw tonight. Um, Barry had control early on. Of course, Orton came flying back. And of course, the DDT. But of course, he's ready to nearly RKO. Barry eventually ran them against the ring pulse. Gave him the ball hammer elbow and a 1-2-3 victory. Yes. Nice to see Ray Barrett win over Orton cleanly without having to cheat. At the ring against the Pulse, giving him the ball hammer elbow. It was an okay matchup, decent matchup, and of course, Ray Barrett, not title matchup at all, got the victory over Randy Orton. Who knows, maybe Orton may get a match against Barrett for the title at Royal Rumble, but we'll never know. Speaking of that, on to our next matchup, which involved one half of the Tag Team Champions. After a uh, reevaluation session, session with Dr. Shelby, with Kane and Dan Bryan trying to lie, it, that was a, that was some, f there was like few highlights tonight. Like it was supposed to have this big thing for Raw twentieth. Nothing really big happened tonight. You know, no Austin like I mentioned in the beginning, but there was some few highlights. One of them was kind of this. I said on, I think I've said on here that kind of grown Kane and Dan Bryan's gimmick. The shtick of being a dysfunctional tag team, at least they're trying to get along now. And his skit with Dr. Chamber is kind of funny, ending with Kane and Daniel Bryan going nuts on Team World Scouts after they were invited by Dr. Shelby, but compared to Dr. Phil, well, the uh, therapist wasn't therapying himself as he went nuts, as his stress trigger was Dr. Phil unleashed Team Hell No on World Scouts to end that skit. And that would bring us to our next match, which was. Kane and on Damien Sandow. Of course, as I mentioned, besides the World Title Match being announced for uh, Royal Rumble tonight, Team Hell No would take on Team World Scholars at the Royal Rumble as well for the tag team titles in two weeks. So, of course, we would see all four men of Team Hell No and World Scholars take on each other in individual competition, and both ended in quick fashion. Kane defeated Damien Sandow in a blink and miss matchup. Kind of a as uh, Damien Sandow did have control early on, it was like I said, just a little bit of a short matchup. But Sandow delivered the elbow of the stain, but Kane got out of it and got the choke slam for the victory. And just for reference, later on in the evening, Cody Rhodes, like I mentioned, did wrestle Daniel Bryan after Kane wrestled Sandow. Same result. The, uh, Cody Rhodes and his mustache lost in quick fashion. It was a blink and mess matchup as Cody Rhodes ended up tapping to the no yes lock, whatever you want to call it. So. World Scholars won a uh, loss in two quick blink and miss matches involving the tag team champions with Kane defeating Sandow and Brian defeating Cody. Of course, they have the tag team title match at the Royal Rumble. Now, on to our next segment involved the W Hall of Fame. I know King Kong Bundy was hinting towards the announcement of him being in it, but it wasn't. But of course, Mick Foley, who was leaked as the first inductee, did end up coming out to accept. Now, there's only a few legends that came tonight, excluding The Rock. We had Flair and Foley. That was it. That's how WWE, that's all WWE could afford for this? Come on, like I said in the beginning, bullshit for this 20th anniversary. Anyway, Big Foley came out happy about being inducted to the Hall of Fame 20th anniversary, but was interrupted by The Shield. God, this is getting old. The Shield needs to go bad. First couple weeks was good. And then, like, that's what happens in WWE these days. Trying to do something edgy, it, it, the shit gets old. Just ask Nexus. Anyway, Shield came out trying to attack Foley before they could. Here comes Ryback, wanting revenge after what happened last week. After Shield screwed him again. And as lovingly so, he'll never win the title. Ryback coming out, being the crap out of Shield. But of course, the numbers game got to him. And Randy Orton came out to try to help. And then Sheamus came out later on to make it even three on three. I smell a six man tag either on SmackDown or on Raw next week involving Ryback, Randy Orton, and Sheamus against all three members of the Shield. So there you go. And fully met up with The Rock later on. Now it's a good moment, but like I said, in a wall, a few highlights, we could take them. Anyway, on to our next match, which ended up being, yes, indeed, the final match of E. Torres. I kind of spoiled the ending already, but it's a Divas match. Let's do that quickly. Eve taking on Caitlyn for the Divas Championship. Of course, they added the stipulation of if Eve got the squall final counted out, where like she did last week, she would be stripped of the title. In a typical OK Divas matchup with Eve trying to fight her best, but of course ended with the spear. 
or as many other people call it, the whore, whore, whore on Facebook. Get it? Gore, 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 whore, 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 because some people think Caitlyn's a whore. I don't think so. She can't wrestle, but she's hot. Anyway, anyway, Caitlyn got the pin and the ring after the spear and became the new Divas Champion today. Now, at later on, of course, they did confirm that Eve quit. And, of course, after being rumored tonight, Eve is leaving and Eve is gone in the WWE. You know, last year we lost a lot of Divas last year. Kelly Kelly left. Beth Phoenix left. Bella Trins left. Who we have left in the Divas division now that Eve's left, too? AJ, Tamina, Oksana. Um, who else is left? Natalia, who's been on the use, same with all the other NXT biatches. They just need to discontinue the Divas division. They just need, that's my opinion. My opinion is, they should put the Divas division on hiatus until they get better athletic Divas. I was talking to my dad and I about this. He's like, why don't they do another Divas contest? Another Divas such. I say if they do, focus more on the wrestling, not just the looks. That's what everybody's been doing these days. So there you go. We'll see what Keelan does as champion, but as every other Divas champion, we don't give a hell. Speaking of that, we wish Trish Olita would have shown up tonight and beat the crap out of Eve. So, what do I care? Like I said, but what well, 20th. Anyway, Caitlyn becomes the new Divas champion. Let's move on. With our next match, which involved the WWE champion, Steve Punk in a non-title match against Bordis Clay. I think Bordis Clay, who's looking slim, uh, should have said to himself, thank God I'm celebrating my one-year anniversary of debuting in Houston, Texas, not Corpus Christi, who didn't even know who the hell I am, who the hell I was. So, there you go. Bordis Clay did have the advantage with the great advantage, but of course, with no help from Heyman, Punk got the victory after delivering the elbow on Bordis after taking him down. He did got him in the uh, Anaconda Vice and tapping out. Punk getting an okay victory over Bordis Clay tonight. And of course, after that, he made fun of Bordis Clay, who needs to go back to being a monster, I agree, than just being this disco freak. That's gotten old quickly after a year. Of course, like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, Punk was stating facts. Fact that he's been champion for 300, 421 days. Fact that no one can stop him. Fact that he's the best in the world. In fact, he will beat the Rock and leave the Royal Rumble as the WWE champion. So there you go. Punk in an okay matchup, defeating Bordis Clay. Sends a message to the Rock. Of course, we would see if Punk would get involved in the Rock concert later on in the evening. Now, I wished at that moment when Punk did talk, I think everyone was hoping that Austin was going to come out and beat the crap out of Punk. Or Tanker, but like I said, stupid. Anyway, there was like, there was logic. Ooh, we don't want anything to take away from the current stars. Like I said in the beginning, I'm a broken record. I'm P.O. tonight. Just disappointed. Anyway, on with the rest of all, 3MB in a over-the-top rope challenge against Sheamus. Like they'll try to hype up the Wumble, but to hype him up with a 3MB victory in over-the-top rope battle royal after uh, Sheamus did eliminate Drew first, but then uh, he did eliminate Jinder Mahal, but of course Jinder and Drew stayed along ringside and kind of helped keep Slater get the victory by pulling Sheamus off the, off the apron after Sheamus did go over the top rope. Helping uh, Heath Slater win. I thought at that moment Austin was going to. I just wished that someone was going to come out and beat the crap out of 3MB. But instead, Sheamus came back up and gave him more bro kicks. Including an impressive one as uh, Jindo had a. Uh, actually, Slater was on Drew's shoulder. He got dropped down and got bro kick from midair anyway. What do I care? Anyway, after that, we saw Cena in an interview about get the F out. Like I said, this wall's going down quickly. <laughs> All right, on with our next matchup after that over the top will better more. Actually, our next next uh, segment involving Miz TV involving Wick Flair. That's all I can get. Like I said, this was 20th anniversary, and all you could get was excluding the Rock, Mick Foley, and Wick Flair. You couldn't get Austin. You couldn't get HBK. You couldn't get Taker. It was in fucking Texas. Come freaking on, guys. 
I know you don't want as many legends as they were on Wall 1000, but at least had some fucking legends. Come on, people. Anyway, Wick Flair going on his usual rambling. It was kind of a fun segment with Miss, Miss TV, interrupted by Antonio Sassol. I kind of thought that last week. Speaking of another match added for the Wumbo, I think Sassol is going to defend his U.S. title against Miss. I think I predicted that about a week ago. That's Sassol and Miz having a feud. Well, of course, the feud got built up by uh, Ric Flair being the crap out of Sassol, letting towards Miz, delivering the figure four. And a little bit of a fun segment, but like I said, for all the legends in the world, you couldn't get anybody besides Flair again. Flair was at the slammy. You don't get some people like, like Austin. I saw many Austin signs. Like I said, like I said, I'm sorry I'm sounding like a broken record. I'm just... Wish St. Wall's 20 of us better tonight. There was some few highlights, but wish there was more. Of course, I mentioned after that, I already mentioned Daniel Bryan defeating Cody Rollins in a quick matchup after Sandow lost to Kane. Now, next up, our main event, which, like I said, few highlights tonight, and this was one of the very few highlights of Wall. It kind of uh, helped Wall from being a total shit fest. John Cena, Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage match for being a TV PG cage match. Very exciting matchup. Very, there's some great spots in there with the cage. And even if, and it doesn't matter, and it proved tonight that it doesn't matter if there was a cage covering the ring or not, Biggie Langston can still get involved in a match. Blocking Cena's exit not once, but twice, but three times. Cena clearing up during wall active. And his foot being tugged by Biggie Langston. Then Cena trying to climb down. But Biggie Langston chasing him back up the cage by banging a chair at the bottom of the cage. And of course Cena trying to exit through the door and getting rammed at the head by Biggie Langston. Even AJ trying to get involved in the end. But before I get to that spot, like I said, great action from these two. Last week's match was pretty good. That was the first match of 2013. Now this match tonight was as good as last week. At the cage, added a little bit more excitement. It ended as Cena was putting up a struggle with Ziggler. Ziggler, even with, like I said, with Biggie Langston still interfering with the cage and all, Ziggler still couldn't beat Cena with spot after spot, zigzag, and of course a big super kick. In the end, AJ tried to climb in, and as Matt was distracted with AJ, Biggie Langston came in with the money in the bank, gave it to Dolph, and as Dolph was trying to hit Cena, Cena ducked, Biggie Langston got the case in his face, Cena got the FU, and a 1-2-3 victory for John Cena. Cena gets another victory over Dolph Ziggler. Like I said, very exciting matchup. One of, like I said, few highlights of Water Night. So there you go. Now on with our last segment. Should have guessed. The Wack Concert. Now I've seen all of his Wack Concerts, and I had high expectations for this Wack Punk feud. Unfortunately, after two weeks... This Rock Cena, the Rock Punk build-up has not been the best. Even though it did end somewhat good tonight, I hope that, God, next week's wall, they build it up. But knowing WWE, and knowing how bad they let us down tonight, we can expect wall to also be another shit fast next week. If they can't even do justice, a good 20th anniversary special, just think what bad, how bad... A normal wall is going to be next week. Anyway, despite the fact the one before the Wumble. Um, so, Rock came out. The Rock concert, I've seen all of them. The Rock concert one, two, and three. His concert last year against Cena was better than this. Um, Rock did come out making his own little Heartbreak Hotel parody on Paul Heyman. That was kind of, that was kind of funny with the penis he hasn't seen in years. Still, Rock jokes almost getting old, but I, I, I still love the Rock. I still wish Rock came out and did the V Smackdown Hotel. Well, since Rock's baby left him, he found a new place to dwell. It's down to the end of Japoni Drive at Smackdown Hotel. I wish he did Smackdown Hotel. I know he did his own version dedicated to Paul Heyman, but still, it ain't as good as the original Smackdown Hotel. So... And he even made fun of Vicky. I know they had a segment involving Mick and Mick Foley and The Rock. Speaking of that, I love when JBL said, Who's going in? Mankind, Cactus Jack, or Dude Love? Who's going to duck them, too? That's kind of funny. But Mick Foley going to the Hall of Fame. Which face of Foley is going to be in? If it's all, well, it's going to be all three. 
Anyway, his parody of Wonderful Tonight by Clapton, the watch parody of Wonderful Tonight, horrible tonight. The Vic was kind of funny, but like I said, not as funny as the past. You know, Wax jokes. I love the Wax and all, but it's still kind of funny, but um, not as funny as in the past, though, especially after this war and all. One of the few highlights this Wax concert, but uh, after that, Wax did call out Punk. What Punk came out, and Wax said, Punk, you. Spilled some facts tonight. I got some facts on my own. Yeah, it is a fact. No one's been stopping you. And he, of course, not came in and of course saying that Punk saying fighting him is like fighting with God. No, it's not. Punk's not God, and of course, Punk will beat him. After that, Punk ran down from the Titantron, and Rock and Punk got it on in a brawl. Of course, being separated from them with the referees and of course officials like. Arn Anderson, a fucking legend. It's sad that one of the only legends we saw was Arn Anderson, who was a freaking road agent now. That, that's sad. That's sad. That one of only few legends came out from the back as a fucking road agent separating Rock and Punk. Anyway, Rock and Punk was still getting it on, blocking, jumping over the officials, still trying to get ahead of one another. At least we finally saw them brawling tonight. At least we had a decent enemy of Rock and Punk having a little brawl post at the end of the wall, but this build-up has not been as I had high expectations. Last week's promo was okay. Tonight's rock concert, WWE should have done a lot more tonight. WWE dropped the ball again tonight. WWE could have done a lot more to build-up rock and punk more tonight. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts, it was once again unsuccessful. And of course, as I mentioned throughout the video, wall, 20th anniversary, WWE did it, could have done a lot more with it. They could have had Austin in it, HBK, all these legends in it that wasn't on War 1000, but then we dropped the ball tonight on that as well. I'm sorry, man. I'm just, like I said, this should have been an epic night. You know, Wall's 20th anniversary. No, didn't want as big of a bombast as War 1000, but at least do some freaking effort. I hope for the 25th anniversary of War in 2017 or 18. Is better than this. 15th anniversary was better than this. War 1000 was better than this. And this is as bad as episode 900. Uh, that is it for my review of this kind of a mixed bag, disappointing War 20th anniversary. Uh, thank you very much for watching and tolerating my rants. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Yeah, yeah. War better not suck next week, but no WWE. It probably will, despite the fact it's before the Wumble. See ya.